Welcome to the shooting show. My name is Thomas Lindy, and in this program, I'm in Limpopo, South Africa, trying to stalk a Limpopo bushbuck. During a trip to Limpopo in South Africa, where I was video filming and photographing other hunters, the owner and BH of the company Dakota Safaris, Matt, he gave me the opportunity to stalk an animal myself. For many years I've dreamt about stalking a bushbuck, so that's why I chose that animal. We went to Limpopo River to try and find one in the dense bush around the river the perfect habitat for a bushbuck to live. After a while, we also got in contact with a bushbuck on the riverbank, but he was a little bit alert. Maybe he heard us and uh, disappeared into the bush. For a while, we stood and waited for the bushbuck to come out again, but he never came back. slowly back. Yes. The bush is just so so thick of after all this rain, so let's go and work on that side. The wind has also shifted, it's now in our face again. Yeah. So we'll work our way slowly back. Um, it's about two, 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 some two point something kilometers to where we started. So let's we'll see if we can work back that way. Yeah. And see before the sun catches us if we get lucky. Yes. Still have it. Yeah, let's see. Let's know. This let's evening stalk is over. We had some nice stalks along the river, saw a lot of birds. Would have loved to see a crocodile, but we didn't. Then the, the farmer he called on the radio, he had seen bushbuck higher up in the fields near to the farming land. So we went up there, tried to find it, to come in front of it, and it was a male with a female, see if it was suitable. But we, we never found it. For now, we will just enjoy the beautiful African night sky. Actually, it was the plan that we next morning would go back to the river, try to find a bush bog there. But during the night, Matt had received a game trail recording from a friend who owned a farm not far from where the camp was. And on that recording, there was a nice picture of an old male. Therefore, we packed our stuff, drove to the area where the plan was. We had to go down the road, find the blind that was prepared for us, and sit and wait for the bush buck to come out of the dense bush and high grass. is still thick, it's early in the season, and 
touch it at the water trough make sure the animal is away from it yeah. otherwise it will be a very expensive bush buck yes. for you yes <laughs> and what behavior would he have would he be he'll be relaxed but yet nervous as well because it's this is not natural for them no. but um Six hours we have been sitting, and now I have to take a leak. So I'll leave my rifle here. The problem is that the bush buck probably will come in these two minutes. I cross my finger that he will not come. To say something smart, to act cool, but I'm not. That I have a little fever. The beast pushback he was hit. I think it was a good hard bullet. And he went, went around us. And I think he's in these bushes here.
to take out. Really? Oh, and we waited more than six hours yeah. Yeah. for this one to come. Justin had the timing wrong. It's yeah, all his fault. Yeah, he said between uh, 12 and 2. Yeah. And 12 minutes past 2. Yeah. We call it professional. That's true. We call it professional Honda. I don't know what to say. Maybe Justin's just a Honda. <laughs> <laughs> This is one of the hard things by sitting in a blind for six hours. It was only me because I'm the client who had the opportunity to sneak out and take a leak, take the chance that he didn't show up while I was out. The PHs are professional, they can control themselves as well as my photographer Andreas, he also controlled himself. Ay, 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 ay. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Old, 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 old. Yeah. He has lived his life. He had it, lived a good life. Yeah. Well, well done. Mr. Thank so you very much. Awesome. Great help. Beautiful, beautiful. You did a lot of work. We did. To succeed with this. Teamwork. Yes. Teamwork. That's why. <laughs> It's important to have a good team. Yeah. Very. I will say my, myself in the end when I had to shoot, <laughs> I was not as confident that I thought I would be <laughs> because it was too exciting. But, but it's like it I told was you a good shot anyway. <laughs> the good thing about it is, like I told you this morning, we're gonna sit, 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 and you're gonna. All of a sudden. And he's right there. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, I just. Yeah. And who spotted him? The camera guy, I think. But he wasn't—he was the only one not asleep by then. Yeah, but I think I have some film about him <laughs> that we can edit into this. <laughs> The area where we hunted the bushbuck is about 1,500 hectares, 1,500 hectares plus minus. Used to be a cattle farm, but with a value with with conservation, with the, if there's value on game, people start taking care of game better. At some point in time, the cattle business, the prices went down, and there was more value in game. Game also offered more job opportunities with international hunters coming out, local hunters. There's the the spin-off of meat curio shops um, so a lot of guys went from cattle farms into the gaming industry South Africa is unique we have a very unique model in South Africa as far as the fencing um, we get a permit called in the Limpopo province called the P3 exemption permit which allows us to hunt year round that also allowed us the income throughout the year it's not cattle is more it was much more based on international prices, demand and supply, whereas the game, the value just picked up, so people took better care of game. In the late 50s, in South Africa, the game, there was a game census, plus minus game census, and the game count was about 600,000 head of game in the late 50s. But today, we're looking at over 10,000 game ranches in South Africa alone, and probably 18 to 20 million head of game. The moment you put value on game, people take care of game. That goes for locals as well. So locals won't just go and poach game out if they know there's a local hunter or international hunter that they can benefit from coming into the area and shoot a specific animal or specific species like your bushbuck. The bushbuck specifically on that area, what the one we were looking for was an old ram that people has been trying to hunt it. They have tried to hunt that specific ram for a while now um, because bushbuck amongst other animals are very territorial and he did start killing off younger males so it was better for for the landowner to get international hunter to hunt that that animal 
then let a local shoot it because it created a job opportunity the meat didn't go to waste the meat goes this we use a lot of that in camp the ones we don't use gets distributed to uh, the locals or staff whereas with a with a with a cattle rancher it will be one or two guys that he has on full time but the spin-off from an international hunter coming and hunting game um it's just it's it's just so big it's it's pe people don't realize how big and how important it is g hunting in south africa hunting in africa for that matter that's conservation 101 value to game people take care of game more movement on the properties less poachers so game naturally is a much better call it a conservationist of the grass and the trees because they don't Unlike cattle that will just destroy everything if you don't run them properly, game is more, call it self-control. They'll eat a little bit here, carry on to the next one. Whereas also trees, if they eat too much of a tree, it, it gives off tannin, which makes the leaves very dry and they'll carry on to the next one. So nature is a, is a, takes much better care of itself than what we know. But with cattle there, they don't have a chance. So a lot of these places guys have started removing the inside fences there is a high fence around it but the high fence still doesn't mean much as far as the movement of game animals like kudu impala um, waterbuck eland they can still jump an eight foot fence without a problem the rest will crawl it so in a lot of these places the the water troughs that we use for the old cattle farms we are in the process or a lot of farmers are in the process of breaking these down to make it look more natural and that in turn will will bring back more not just game species like warthogs and other game but also bird species that 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 needed that type of they got to take a bath a bath in mud to kill off ticks and lice and and so forth so the gaming industry for the conservation part of it is you can't compare it so you'll have a giraffe that will eat the top of the tree then you have the kudu in the middle and you go down to the smallest of the small that the whole tree gets utilized but not it won't be get killed it won't get killed it they'll it, nature takes care of itself and it will carry on so that stimulation to the tree and the grasses will just enhance the the area much more better than what cattle will cattle will i mean you can see where cattle is there's no grass left or anything like that they'll just destroy everything if not done done properly where game is you don't have to control them that much. They have that natural sustainability to take care of everything. Hi, Ed Coles from Shooting Times magazine. We're having a look at this little run around from Aston Martin, the new DBX. So let's get knee deep. In the back, quite a lot of space, uh, eight to nine full bags of wheat, which isn't bad going. Uh, enough room for kit, a couple of dogs. Might be a backseat job for the shotgun, but not a bad effort. As well as mahoosive 22 inch wheels, we also have independent suspension, front and rear, but air suspension as well, which is also adjustable. 190 mil at its lowest, at its highest in off-road mode, 235 mil, which is kind of high lux, high lux, you know, D Max kind of territory, which isn't bad. The business end, we have a four-liter twin-turbo V8. She uh, houses 542 tiny horses, 
and they gallop out 700 newton meters of torque. Uh, 4.3 seconds is all it takes to get to uh, 60 mile an hour. There's some quite sexy materials go gone into this. Cylinder heads, zirconium alloy. Yes. Uh, as well as that, nine speed automatic gearbox, magnesium casing on that as well. Uh, variable torque distribution for the all wheel drive system. As well as that, chassis and everything, bonded aluminium, as you can see, big old cast bits of alley there, lightweight, mega strong, should take a bit of grief. Uh, beautifully handcrafted in Britain by Ethan Dyer Paul. Ethan. So, all loaded up. Let's see how she gets on round Edwardshire. So, inside, rather plush in here, leather interior, hand finished, panoramic roof. Uh, we have many bells and whistles, the usual kind of kind of ones, sat nav, radio, DAB, uh, various media kind of things, so we can plug our USBs in and whatnot. Uh, Obviously telephone, all hands free in that. And we can connect with Apple Play and Android Play. Uh, quite a few vehicle settings as well. Uh, GT mode, that's the normal mode where everything's sort of set halfway. Uh, we also have two sports modes, one, uh, two that will kill you in various degrees, uh, sport and sport plus. And we also have two terrain modes, which jack us up and uh, fettle around with everything. So hopefully we won't get stuck. Pretty luxurious in the back as well. Plenty of space as well. Plenty of uh, leg room. A uh, couple of USBs uh, to keep the passengers and the kids and whatnot amused. Uh, it's very comfortable, actually. Uh, air vents and whatnot to keep us cool. Uh, we've also got heated seats in the back uh, and cooled seats in the back. Ooh. Isofix is standard in the back so you can bring the wee ones with you. Pretty simple. Pull this little panel out. There we go. Pretty faff free, which is what we like. Underneath, we can actually see quite a bit. Uh, Rear independent suspension, all cast aluminium arms, lightweight, mega strong. Um, we've also got a carbon fibre prop shaft that uh, connects front and rear rear drive. Uh, yeah, it's all a bit sexy underneath there. Um, torque distribution is... Uh, fettled by some uh, electronic witchcraft so hopefully we should have enough traction either wheel so we shouldn't get stuck um height wise with it fully up things are looking pretty good so there shouldn't be any uh, awkward phone calls to patrick So, I think we can all agree, it is a thing of beauty. Uh, it does work on and off road. Surprisingly, rather good round town. And considering there's 542 tiny horses waiting to gallop out, not bad going actually at 30 miles an hour. Ultimate question, yours at a snip, well, starting at 160,000 pounds. How can we hide £160,000 in the wheat bill? Stay tuned, Fuel Gauge fans, for the next instalment.
Thank you for watching. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, please do. And please follow us on the social media. See you next time.